Hi, and welcome back to Living Life with LaVon. Today we are talking about my tummy tuck and lipo journey. This is part two. So if you haven't seen part one, make sure you go out there, check that out. And if you have not subscribed to my channel yet, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you can get all of the new videos that are coming out. Okay, I got a lot of good stuff for you guys. So let's get started. I did notice, um, remember in part one, I told you guys, um, basically I wanted to give you my one year journey to through my tummy tuck and lipo procedure. Um, today is August the 28th, it's Sunday, and my surgery was on September 1st. So I would have had like three days left and it'll be one year of my recovery. So basically that's what I'm doing. I'm just taking you through it. Um, so we've already talked about a lot of it in, um, Part one, I told you I was going to show you some of the things that I had to wear when after the surgery. So when you're still at the hospital or surgery center or wherever you had it, I had mine at a surgery center. Um, I came home the same day. So what they did was they gave me this like compression girdle. Let me show you. It's just like a band and it has a Velcro edge to it. And basically they wrapped me up really tight and closed up the band, you know? So only thing with this was, like I told you, I had those drainage tubes. I had two drainage tubes. It was draining the fluid out. Um, and so the, the tubes are like little rubber tubes. They're no thicker than the, uh, this ink pen, right? So, um, and then that tube goes into a little rubber ball, basically. So what happens is that fluid goes through the tube and goes into the ball and it's filled with fluid and blood and stuff. And then you have to empty that every, it depends on how um, fast it fills up basically. Um, sometimes it's every hour if it fills up, sometimes it's every two or three hours. And what they will do is give you a log for you to um, keep up with how much fluid. So you have to have a measuring cup of some sort. I just went to the dollar store and bought a measuring cup. And after you get the fluid, you pour it in the measuring cup to see how much it is. And then you log that on your little log that they gave you. So when you go back to your first appointment, second appointment, you show them the log and based upon how much fluid is still coming out, that's what will determine when they take the tubes out. Now, the tubes are very uncomfortable for multiple reasons for me. Um, because for one, they had to be up under the little girdle thing. So they're sticking out from up under here. Hang on. They're sticking out from under here and then you've got the ball. But the tube is a little longer and um, sometimes it'll get stuck on things. Or if you're laying on it, you can pull it. This tube is actually sewn into your skin, so you really don't want to pull it. It's very painful. If you pull it out, um, either they're going to have to put it back in or depend on what your surgeon says, how they have to deal with that. You really don't want to pull that out. I did. <laughs> I kept laying on it. <laughs> um, of course, it was very painful to pull it out. And then that means, but by the time it came out, I wasn't uh, excreting that much fluid anymore anyway. Plus I had two of them, so I still had one in. Um, I think at my first appointment back, it was, 
Is it still there, the first appointment or the second appointment? No, it was the first appointment. Um, no, it was the second. It was the second. First appointment, they said, oh, you're doing good. You know, you, you're getting a lot of fluid out because they look at your chart and everything. And then they take a look at the tubes and the, um, the little balls to see what the fluid looks like to make sure it's not mostly blood because it's not supposed to be blood that's coming out. It's supposed to be fluid. But remember, there will be a little blood in it, so or it's tinged with blood sometimes. So they look at that to determine um, when it's time for you to get those taken out. And what they will do, they will basically cut your stitches and pull it out. But remember, that tube is inside you. So they pull it out. Um, they are under the impression that it's painful when it comes out but mine I didn't even realize she had taken it out because when she was doing it I was laying down and I'm talking and she had already finished it so I'm like well that wasn't painful because I didn't even know you had done it so I mean I do have a high pain tolerance or pain threshold but that wasn't painful so um anyway that is one of the things that I had to wear during my recovery Another thing is because most of my scars were in the front, I had to wear pajamas that were open in the front. So let me show you. I just went and bought me some pajamas, you know, uh, let's see, that opened in the front. <laughs> it makes it a lot easier to take it off um, and then of course I have the shorts that go with them and the shorts have the elastic on them and then you can tie them up to make them as loose or tight as you want. You don't want anything tight on your stomach other than your girdle, okay? So, um, because remember, you have been cut from here to here. And then this skin has been pulled up. So all of this is sore, okay? My pain was not really that bad. They did give me pain pills. They give you regular pain pills. They suggest you take Tylenol. And then they gave me some oxycodone, which is a narcotic. But I really didn't need the oxy. Um, it's kind of bright in here but I hope the lighting is good for you guys. But anyway, um, I didn't need the Oxy. It, the pain wasn't that bad for me, you know? I had heard when I did my research that a tummy tuck is one of the most painful surgeries. But you gotta remember, I already had three surgeries on my stomach. I had three, no, I had four surgeries on my stomach. I had three C-sections and a hysterectomy. So, let me show you again. <laughs> I had two stomachs. I had this one, and then there was another one hanging. So that one that was hanging was basically skin down there. It was just skin. And it, it was from here to like here. Remember I told you? In the first video, when I sat down, I could never see the top of my thighs. I could never see anything from here to here because I had so much skin hanging from here to here. I'm a, mm -hmm. um, and that was what they cut off. Uh, they opened it up, pulled it down, and just snipped it off. Put it on the table. And I've got a picture of it. I want to show you guys. Um... But then after that, you know, they pull the skin up off of your stomach. Let me show you. Like if you were to pull up your shirt and you can see your stomach is, is exposed, that's what it's like. They pull up the skin and expose the muscles and then they tighten the muscles. You've got muscles here and here. They pull them together and tighten them up, which is really good. So only thing, is up under those muscles, you have organs and things, and you still have fat under there. That's the visceral fat that you have to work off. Remember, they couldn't get that out with a tummy tuck, okay? I mean, that they don't take out fat with a tummy tuck, but they couldn't get that out with the liposuction. Remember, I had both, okay? So, um, 
I have pictures of the containers that my um, fl my fat that they sucked out of me with my lipo. I'm going to show you that picture. Um, I have a picture of me laying on the uh, table during surgery. I'm going to show you that picture. Uh, what other good pictures do I have? Um, well, at the end of the video, there's just going to be a lot of pictures. So just scroll through and you'll see the pictures. There is, um, like I said, the picture of the fat. Um, oh, let me show you the other garment. I showed you that first garment. So after you wear this, they'll let you know, like for the first couple weeks, you wear this. Some people say you only have to wear it for one week. It's all up to your surgeon. All the surgeons, when I did the research, all the surgeons do everything different. It's the same procedure, but they all do things different. So you have to go by what your surgeon says because your surgeon is the one that's going to be seeing you and taking care of you during your recovery. And your surgeon knows what they did to you and how you're doing. So some surgeons say to wear one of these, some say not to. You have to do with, for you, what your surgeon says, okay? So after wearing this for a couple weeks, it's very uncomfortable because, well, another reason, um, that Velcro, it was sticking me, you know? It was just sticking into me as, this is real stiff. And so it was, it was very uncomfortable. Okay, so they have these things that are called Fajas. And a Faja is a girdle. Let me show you my Faja. Um, you remember after you do this, you're gonna start, your body's going to start to change. So the first Faja that I had, it's a girt, it's a girdle and it has, let me show you, where you can snap it closed like this. Okay. And then at the top, there's a fastener as well. Let's put that in there. Okay. And then there's a zipper. Make sure it stays closed. Okay. And so what happens is the front of this goes up under your breast. A lot of people who have tummy tucks have breast reduction or breast enlargement surgeries at the same time. So I guess they don't want your breast to be tight or whatever. I, I'm not sure why. I, I'm thinking that's why. But anyway, most of the Fajas, your breasts are out. This is the back of it. You know, I'm just showing that you this um, just so you can see it. And it comes all the way down to your thighs. Some of these, depending on what else you have done, uh, it may come down longer because some people have that Brazilian butt lift. So, or some down to their thighs. So it may come all the way down here to your thighs or something. But the majority of them do have on the back side, they have this part, you know, for your butt to go into. It's like, it's bigger, right? But remember, I don't have a butt. <laughs> And I told you, if one thing fits for me for the top, it's not gonna fit for the bottom and vice versa. So of course, this thing was extremely tight on me. Um, and that's what they want. You know, it's a compression garment. They wanna compress all of that in there with, to squeeze out the liquids, right? So I told you I have no legs either. So for the leg part, you know, it's all pretty and lacy, it's supposed to fit around your thighs. You know, my legs are in here like this, wobbling around in here because I don't have any legs. This part, which would normally be tight on your butt, is just like this because there is no butt on me, but that's that's just me. But the rest of it was extremely tight, um, and I guess it did its job. It This was more comfortable than the tubes. However... I still had the tubes when I had this on. So this wasn't comfortable either because 
another thing with those tubes is they're just hanging, you know, and they hang almost to your knees. So you don't want them just hanging because like I said, the, the ball is hanging. The tube is sewn into you. So it's pulling on you. So when I had them on here, what I would do, I'd take the, the tube, um, let me give you an example. So say this is the tube and this is the ball. So I would take the, the right part, the part of the tube right before it gets to the ball and I would take a safety pin and pin it on here so that it's close to me versus just hanging. So at this point, it's only hanging, you know, just this amount versus it hanging like this, you know? So, and then the same with this, I had to find a way to keep the um, things in here. Those, those tubes were not a friend of mine. I didn't like them, but they were necessary. So, um, and they're not painful um, unless you pull them. So you have to be very careful with them. Try not to pull them, try not to lay on them. Um, you don't want to squish the bulb because if you squish the bulb, you know, you can be sending your stuff back up into you and it's supposed to be coming out of you. Yeah. Um, then, and I can't show you the bulb because they took the bulbs when they took them out of me, excuse me, and threw them away. But it's just like, a, it's a little bit bigger than an egg, but it's shaped like an egg. It's just a clear plastic thing that looks like a very large egg. It's about that big, just a round thing. And you fill it with fluid and it has a little opening so that you could pour the fluid out, you know, you squeeze the fluid out. Um, and then they have like whole videos and things um, and in the doctor's office and the nurses, they will explain to you how to drain your drainage tubes. You know, you gotta actually take that too because the whole tube is full of this liquid, right? So you've gotta squeeze all of that out, you know, and make it go into the bulb. I wanna call it a bulb for now. Squeeze all of that out into the bulb. Once it's in the bulb, then you take the top off of the bulb and you can pour it into your measuring cup so that you can measure it. And then of course you document whatever, how many um, cc's you had and pour it in the trash. I mean, not in the trash, in the toilet, okay? Flush that down the toilet. Um, it's, it's once you've done it once, it's easy to do it. It's not a very hard process. Like I said, you're just milking that tube. You take the thing off, you pour it in the thing, write it down, pour it in, in the toilet. It's, it's not that hard. It's very gross. It's very gross to look at. It doesn't smell good, but it is what it is. And like I said, you have to do that multiple times a day. So um, that's another thing. Um, so as when you have your tummy tuck in your lipo, of course the goal is so that you are smaller or in shape different, but remember when it's first done, you're full of fluid. So you may be bigger than what you were when you initially had the procedure done, but each day your body will start to change. Okay. Um, you, you're going to start to get smaller. If you had bruising, you're going, oh, that's something I need to show you a picture of the bruising. Let me write that down so I remember. Um, if you had bruising, your bruising is going to start to change. Your body's going to start to get smaller. But sometimes if you do too much activity, you will get more fluid. So your body may be doing this. It's getting smaller. It's getting bigger. One day is smaller. One day is bigger. One day is real, real small. The next day is bigger. And you're like, but I thought the whole purpose of this was to be smaller. Well, you'll get there. But it takes a whole year. That's why I'm at my one year point now. And I think this is as small as I'm going to get for now. So with my surgery, when remember, not only did I have a tummy tuck, I had lipo as well. So with my lipo, that's when they suck the fat out. Mm -hmm. um, you have these things under your arms. They're, well, I did. There's fat that's under there. Those are called bra rolls. That's one part that they 
sucked fat out. Right in here, they sucked fat out. Down here, they sucked fat out. So there's scars in all of these places. They'll give you um, scar cream and tell you how to take care of your scars and things. Um, my scars mm -hmm. did not, they didn't keloid or anything like that. So I just have these little dark spots and they're very small, they're, you know, really small. Um, but you, they're still noticeable. So, uh, we as black people use skin lightener sometimes. I am, I gave it my year to see if they would go away, if they would fade or whatever, since they didn't fade as much as I would like them to. I'm going to get some skin lighteners, which they call them skin bleachers and things like that, and just put them on them. Like I said, they're little small things, and I'm just going to put some of that on the scar so that they go away. Um my scar for the tummy tuck is all the way on this side it because it goes around all the way up to here all the way to here on this side so and it's so far down um that way if i wear a bikini let me show you it's way down here so if i wear a bikini you can't see it um which is very good you know um it didn't pucker, it didn't keloid, it's not swollen, it's smooth all the way around. However, it is still dark, so I do have to um, um, get use some of the skin lightener on that scar too, because that's a very huge scar. I told people, I'm gonna look like Frankenstein with this scar, and when I got the scar, I did. I looked like Frankenstein, okay? So, um, back to, going up and down. So after you wear your faja for a while, you're going to get smaller eventually, and then the faja is not going to be tight. So I started off with the big one, and then I had to get another one that's just smaller. So chances are you're going to go through two or three of them, um, and so you're going to have different sizes. Uh, let's see, let's see. Oh, I mentioned scarring. So bruising. Um, I'm going to definitely show you my bruising. I had bruises. I looked in the mirror. I was purple. My entire back was purple. I'm not talking about a little bruise like this. I'm talking about a bruise from here all the way down, all the way across, all the way around. My entire midriff was purple. It was scary. It looked like somebody beat me black and blue, but it was purple. Um, and then as it tends to go away, it fades and just gets a little light purple and everything, but it was not pretty to look at. After having a tummy tuck, it, your body is not something that you really, that's not attractive. You know, it's going to take a while for it to get there. You're going to have all these scars. You're going to have all this bruising. You're going to have all this swelling. So your body's going to look worse than it did before you had the surgery. Although the goal is for your body to look better, eventually, excuse me, it will, but you have to be patient. You have to wait that year. Um, this is not a weight loss procedure. This is to remove skin as far as the tummy tuck and to remove fat as far as the lipo. However, when they remove the fat, it depends on what state you live in. Each state only allows a certain amount of fat to be removed. Um, so you have to go by that state's guidelines. Just make sure you have a board certified doctor and they will definitely go by the guidelines. You know, you can go out of the country and go to some of these other doctors that's going to just do whatever to try to make you look good. But is that going to, are you willing to risk your life or your health to do that? No, I wasn't. So I wanted to make sure I was still healthy. I still wanted to be alive. So I found me a very good um, board certified doctor in Dr. Kendall Peters. And so... Um, Everything came out fine. Um, remember, I don't have hips, so I'm not going to have that hourglass figure, which is fine. Although, 
you can buy hips. <laughs> Technically, you're, you're buying a girdle and it has these pads on the sides, so it looks like hips. I did buy one. I'm gonna confess, I did buy one, but it was too little. So it kept rolling down. So I'm gonna get another one though, because not only do they have them for the hips, they also have them with the butt pads. And I, I don't have a butt, so I am gonna get one because it does make the clothes look a lot better, you know? The clothes are not made to be like this. Most clothes are made to have some type of shape to them, you know? Pants, all pants have a butt in them, so it's made to, you know, have a butt. The, you know, the little tight dresses, they're made to have hips. So, um, I'm going to get me another one. <laughs> I remember I had one a long time ago, and... Um, it, I just had the pads. I didn't have the girdle. I said, I'm going to put them in my panties and, you know, put them on the side and see what happened. And I went to a party and, you know, it was crowded. I'm like, somebody's going to bump into me. And instead of, wait, instead of my hips being here, they're going to be over here. It's going to be over here. And I had on a dress. I'm like, oh, no, it's going to fall out. It's going to be on the floor or something. So, um, yeah. I like the one with the girdle because the pad is inserted into like a little pocket inside the girdle. You have these pockets in the pads. So um, the one that I did have, the pads were not thick at all. So it was not like some unbelievable hip or some unbelievable butt that was just so big all of a sudden. It was, it was very, very minimal um, addition. So I did like that. So it looked more believable. Um, so I need to talk to you about purchasing clothes. Yes, I need to talk to you about purchasing clothes. So they tell you not to buy any clothes for a year. You have to be patient when you have these procedures. Of course, I saw myself so much smaller because I had the day after um, my surgery, I was already down 18 pounds. So I was so excited. I'm online buying this. I'm buying uh, shirts that have my stomach showing. I'm buying shorts that are tight. I've always been able to wear um, shorts out of the kids section as long as um, it, I used to have to wear them up under that fat. As long as it was up under the fat, everything was small. It was just that big old piece of fat that was so big that if I tried to fasten it over that, it wouldn't. But if I lift that fat up, put my shorts on under there, I could wear the kids size 16, sometimes size 14, and then maybe they would fit my legs because remember my legs are so skinny. But anyway, I went shopping, of course. I wasn't supposed to. Um, I bought those shirts, like I said, um, the shirts that crop tops, basically they stop right here, you know, and you can see your stomach. Um, I bought a lot of shorts. I bought, uh, a lot of dresses and swimming suits. I bought bikinis. That's what I bought. I bought bikinis. <laughs> wore a bikini in over 30 years. So, like I said, the bottoms fitted. The tops were too little. And then what I noticed was like three weeks later when I tried on the exact same bikini, the bottom was too big. Top didn't change because remember, I didn't have surgery at the top. Top didn't change. It's still too little, but the bottom is too big because I am shrinking at the bottom, you know. So don't buy clothes. And I bought a lot of clothes. Don't buy a lot of clothes because your body is going to change for an entire year. Um, let's see. What else did I buy? I, 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 was, I did look a lot better in the clothes, though. Um, I was able to wear belts. That's something I hadn't worn in 30 years. I bought belts like crazy. Um, but remember, my, my figure's still not an hourglass figure. So sometimes the belts look good. Sometimes they didn't. It depends on what I had on. Um, I was able to buy clothes off the rack. But they would only fit for a week or two. So 
don't do that, you know. Um, I've got all these clothes. Some of them I haven't even opened yet, and it's been a year. Um, I might be able to fit them now. We'll see. But um, as far as the swimming suits, no, that, that was not a good idea. But I wanted to get in the pool. Um, they told me, I think after the first three months that I could get in the pool um, and I was just so excited. I had a new belly button. And so you're seeing all these different things that you never seen on, had seen on me before because I used to wear one pieces. So you never saw my belly button. Um, I still had all those scars. So you can see my new belly button, which looks totally different from the other one. Um, and then I had the scars. So even though things were supposed to look better, some things just didn't, you know what I'm saying? So I guess it's a trade-off um, on what, you know, looks good. I, I look good um, in certain types of clothes, like shorts, you know, I look so much better in the shorts because I can wear a shirt that isn't hanging all the way to my knees. I can actually tuck a shirt in my pants and put on a belt. Um, it's still not all the way in. It's still sticking out a little bit. Cause like I said, they can only take so much fat out. Um, but what they did tell me is the majority of what I have left is not fat. It's still skin. Um, so like on my back, I still have back fat. Um, remember, they took the bra rolls, but they didn't do the back fat. They said I could come mm -hmm. back and get uh, the back fat sucked out, um, lipo with that, but I don't want to have another surgery for that. They said, now that I've had the two, that when I exercise, the fat will come off easier. They said a lot of what I have also is still skin and the skin will tighten easier. So I really need to get in the gym. Um, they won't let you get in the gym in the first six months because those muscles still are not, sewn, they're sewn together, but they're still not healed. That skin that's placed back on top of those muscles still has not adhered to those muscles yet. Um, and for me, it felt like I can feel the skin sliding back and forth or something. It was weird. Uh, another one of the feelings that some people have, or at least I had, was this itching. My stomach used to itch, but it's itching on the inside. So no matter how much you scratch it, it doesn't go away. And they told me that is the nerves coming back to life where uh, the, the nerves from that skin being attached back to your muscle uh, those nerves in between there are attaching and when they're attaching, they're generating little tingling things, which feels like it's itching. So they said that's a sign of healing, which is good. It's just itching so bad. Like I said, I didn't have a lot of pain, but I had a lot of that itching and I still have some, that itching sometimes. So, you know, um, so make sure that you have all the things that you need before you have your procedure because you probably will not be going out shopping unless you're shopping online. My plastic surgeon gave me a lot of things. Like they gave me, you know, my pain pills. They gave me creams to get rid of the scars. Um, they gave me cream to put inside my belly button. I think it was the same cream for that. Um, so make sure you have everything. Make sure you have your fajas. Make sure you have your pajamas ready so that when you come home, you know, you'll be comfortable. Um, you won't be able to take showers for a while. So, um, the first couple days, you know, those wipes that they have, the big wipes, use those, have some of those on hand so that you can use those um, because it's hard to stand up those first couple days. So that whole first week is going to be a little on the difficult side. That's the time where you need to pamper yourself. That's the time where you need to relax, get you some rest, 
have somebody there with you. It you you I, you cannot go through this by yourself. You really need to have somebody there with you. Um, that first day was it the first two days? The anesthesia was so much still in my body that two times when I got up to go to the bathroom, I passed out. It was just like, I just, I could feel myself going to sleep. And thank God my husband was here and was already helping me go to the bathroom because it was painful to walk. So when I passed out, he was able to catch me. Yeah, don't try and do this alone. Have somebody there with you, especially the first week. A lot of places that do it will have you stay there for a couple of weeks or something. But mine, it was an in and out type of situation. So I didn't have that. Um, they did have like a 24 hour phone, call, phone number for me to call in case anything was going wrong. Um, only time I really had to call them was when I was passing out. I'm like, what is going on? So they told me the anesthesia was still in my body and sometimes it just takes longer to wear off on some people. They said sometimes if you stand up too fast, you could pass out. So make sure when you're getting up, you're getting up slow. Although being cut from side to side, it's hard to get up. So you are getting up slow. I don't know, but anyway. Um, let's see. Remember, I need you guys to, to ask me some questions down in the comments so I can tell you these things. Try to remember a whole year's worth of recovery and what I went through is hard, especially at the end of the year. Had I been doing, doing this throughout the year, it would have been a lot easier. I would have remembered a lot more things, but... I'm just trying to give you guys a general sense of the my journey because a lot of people have been asking me, you know, well, they've been asking certain questions. So I'm trying to get those out and just to help people in case this is something that you want to do in your life um, for you. It is a decision that you need to make for you. You don't want to go and do this for other people. You know, somebody's calling you fat or you have some boyfriend or husband that wants you to have some Barbie doll figure or whatever. Do this for you. I did, for me, it was, like I said, I wanted to do this for 30 years. And so this was a decision that I made based on so many different things. I, I wanted to be able to buy clothes off the rack. I wanted to be able to pull my pants up over that skin that was hanging, that second stomach. I wanted to just have one stomach versus two. Um, I wanted to be able to wear a swimming suit. I wanted to be able to wear shirts that didn't come almost all the way down to my knees. I was tired of hiding my body. And so this was for me. I, I wanted to be able, I'm not trying to go off and expose my body and show a lot. I was just tired of hiding it you know, and I wanted to be able to shop where it was a lot easier to shop versus um, having to try on 10 different pair of pants before I could find one that fit. You know, I might, like I said, sometimes I could fit a size 16, sometimes I could fit an eight, depending on where I pulled it up on my body, if it had an elastic waist in it or things. Remember, I told you guys at one point, I was wearing maternity clothes because it would fit over my stomach, you know? And it still was the right size, so it fit my butt, it fit my legs and things. But who wants to wear maternity clothes for the rest of their life? That, no, that was not an option to continue. So I am very pleased with my decision to do this. Um, did I get my breast reduction? No. Am I going to go back and get the lipo on my back, my back fat? No. I'm going to get in that gym and work this off. Um, because now, like the doctors and nurses told me, it's going to come off easier now. So I need to get up off my lazy behind and just go to the gym, work it off. I have excuse after excuse why I don't want to work things, do a lot of um, exercises, you know, like even walking. If I walk outside, I live in Florida, it's 90 degrees. Who's walking in 90 degrees? Not me. Um, 
a lot of exercises that I do because of the issues with my knee. It's hard to bend my knee. Um, so it's hard for me to do exercises like that. Um, so some, I do have some legitimate reasons why I can't exercise like I would like to or like I need to. But thank God, I have not gained any weight in a year. Um, they say with the liposuction, the fat probably will not come back in those areas, um, which is good. It'll go somewhere else. So maybe it'll go to my legs. Maybe it'll go to my butt. That's what I would like. Um, just hope it don't go to my shoulder or something and be a big hump of fat on my shoulder. <laughs> oh, so um, let's see. So I think that's basically going to be the end of part two. Um, but I still need you guys to give me some questions because I am going to do a part three, but my part three is basically going to just have a lot of pictures, um, what I used to look like, what I look like now, just a lot of before and after pictures. I'm going to give you some of those today, but, um, that's just going to be a lot of pictures for part three. And if you ask questions though, from this video, then I will answer those on part three. So right now. I'm going to say thank you for traveling my tummy tuck and lipo journey, and I will see you guys in next day, in, in part three.